Thank you, thank you. So, as you just heard, the topic of my talk is what astrology can teach us about being human, all right? And most people, what they know about astrology, they know from reading magazines or newspapers about their sun sign, okay? And so when people ask, what's your sign? What you're answering when you answer that question is what sign the sun was in at the time of your birth. So essentially, what time of the year were you born, okay? But I think what's lost on people who don't have this un a deeper understanding of astrology is that there are nine other planets, all right? And, and quite obviously, the sun is not a planet, it's a star. But the, the planet comes from the Greek root um, for the word wanderers, right? So the ancients noticed when they looked up at the sky that there were certain sets of fixed constellations, fixed stars, stars that moved together. And they also noticed that there seemed to be these bright lights that moved against the backdrop of the constellations or the fixed stars, okay? And so they, they gave them the name wanderers, and this is where we get the idea of planets, all right? And so what I'm going to do is, when you, I'm an astrologer, as, as you heard, and when I cast someone's chart, I get a circle with the bunch showing me where the planets were at the time of their birth. And it's my job to, to take that information and help the person understand themselves better. And 100% of the people that I see, they have all 10 planets in their chart. So this is where I get the idea of every single person, we all have these 10 drives, these 10 urges inside of us that need to be expressed, and need to be addressed. All right. And so what I'm going to do, starting with the sun, is I'm going to go from the sun all the way through Pluto. And yes, for astrologers, Pluto is still a planet. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about what the drive or what the function that this planet represents is. And I'm going to talk about what it looks like when we're doing a good job with this planet and what it looks like when we're not doing a good job with this planet. And so we'll start with the sun. All right. So... You know, and the, the fact that we use planets, right? The planets as a symbol, give, it give us, gives us information. So the idea of what we know about the sun is that all of the planets in the solar system revolve around the sun, right? And so it's the same thing with us, right? Wherever your sun is in your chart, you're going to notice that everything in your life tends to revolve around this, this topic, okay? And what the sun represents uh, relative to being human is that all humans need an identity, Okay? We all need an ego. And I don't mean ego in the pathological sense. I mean ego when we need a sense of I, right? I'm the one having these experiences. I'm hungry. I'm tired. I'm happy. The I, okay? And so the sun is about developing a healthy, positive self-image, a sense of who we are, okay? When we don't, right? When we, when we don't take the necessary steps to develop a sense of identity, we experience confusion we experience a sense of feeling lost. I don't know who I am. This feeling of almost having multiple personalities, right? Because we haven't identified who we actually are, okay? And how this can manifest in life is people who need to be the center of attention, right? They just pull and they need to be celebrated. They need to be, they, they need to be applauded, okay? And it's the negative side of the sun of when people have, uh, they're arrogant or self-centered, right? that they're so obsessed with themselves that they're blind to everything else, okay? And obviously that causes troubles in people's life. But the positive expression of the sun is we know who we are and we have meaningful experiences in life, okay? So I, I think of major sun events in life or, or things that we look back on and we say, that, you know? That's when I really found out who I was, okay? For me, it was when I retired from football and decided to travel around the world, okay? Experience of playing football felt good, but when I started to leave that behind and travel and explore, I, I knew who I was at that moment, and my life became much more meaningful, okay? The moon, okay? So the moon is the second planet in, in astrology that we talk about. And where the sun is about our identity out in the world, the moon is about our inner world, okay? It's about our heart. It's about our soul. Not in a spiritual sense, but the sense of when we say that someone is soulful or we have a soulful connection with someone. It's because we're interacting at a deeper level, right? So where the sun is about making choices out in the world, meaningful choices, the moon is about our ability to handle those things that arise from within, okay? So moods, dreams, fantasies, okay? This ability to be sensitive, right? And so what the moon represents relative to being human is we all need to have a heart, Right? We all need to be able to feel. We all need to be able to respond to our inner world, to these things that rise up from within. 
okay? And they rise up, they're, they're autonomous, right? We can't control our moods. We can't control what we dream of. We can't control our fantasies. We have to adjust and adapt and respond to them the same way a parent would respond to a, to a child, okay? And in astrology, the moon points to the mother, but, but more deeply, it points to our ability to take care of ourselves, okay? And so if we're taking care of the moon, we can take care of ourselves, we're healthy, we're happy, and we have roots, all right? If we're not able to, to do a good job taking care of the moon, we are moody, right? We're, we're controlled by our, by our feelings and our emotions, even to the point of what I'll call navel-gazing, where we're so worried and concerned about how we're feeling that we can't actually function in the outer world. Next planet is Mercury. Okay? Mercury is the planet of intelligence. Right? It's about the human need to, to extract information from our environment, to think about it, and to, sh and to communicate, to share that information. And so when we're doing a good job with Mercury, we have an open mind. We have curiosity. We're comfortable being confused, okay? Because if you think of the idea of confusion, confusion just means the information that I'm taking in right now is just beyond my understanding, okay? And so people that have Mercury strong in their charts, they tend to be writers, teachers, communicators, right? They have this ability to take in information and interpret it into a way that we can understand it, right? And so, and we're making a poor response to, to Mercury. We're closed-minded. New information has to be pushed away, okay? We get defensive, right? Someone gives us information that we don't have a place to put it, we argue, right? Another shadow side of Mercury is rationalization, right? We stay up in our heads too much, always in concepts, okay? Again, concepts, language are important because it's the way we get information from the world. Another key interesting point to, to a high-functioning Mercury is the ability to recognize signs and omens, all right? I talked about communication, right? And there's communication of I'm speaking, you guys are hearing, right? Right now as you're listening to me and I'm saying words and you're having thoughts, that's Mercury, okay? So th that not only, we don't only communicate with people, we communicate with places, we communicate with things, we communicate with clothes, right? This is all Mercury. Next planet is Venus, all right? Venus is the goddess of love. Relative to being human, Venus is that need we all have to calm down and to relax, okay? And it, it, the connection here is if you under, understand the mythology of Venus, it's about, she's the, the, the goddess of love and the goddess of beauty, okay? And how this relates to calming down, right? It's like when you have a really difficult day, difficult week, a difficult month, right? Usually the thing that helps us get through those are other people. Okay, so Venus has a lot to do with relationships, but the, the specific purpose of relationships can help us relieve stress. They can help us enjoy life, right? I think of the, the ideal Venus moment, whether it's a beautiful sunset, whether it's an amazing conversation, whether it's looking at a beautiful painting, is <sighs> the release of tension, right? And so when we're making a strong response to Venus, is we have meaningful relationships with people, meaningful affiliations, right? There's this, this exchange, this back and forth, where this person makes my life easier, less stressful, better, and I have something to contribute to this person, okay? And, and also Venus is our ability to, to appreciate beauty, right? And depending where our Venus is, it's gonna give us clues on what's attractive to us, okay? Another interesting point about Venus is our, this function that all animals have, mate selection. You know, uh, one of my favorite stories to tell about Venus is I shot a commercial last summer and we had to bring our dogs for the commercials. And as we brought the dogs, the first things the dogs did is when they met each other is they sniffed each other's crotches, all right? And when I saw that, I thought, you know, if we did that, we'd probably make better decisions than the people that we... <laughs> but, but really, but this is the Venus function, is, is our ability to recognize people that can actually contribute to us. All right, and so when we're making a poor response to Venus, first, first and foremost, we're stressed out, you know, because we haven't found a way to relieve stress. And secondly, you know, a lot of the times, one of the things that stresses us out the most are our are, are dysfunctional relationships, right? And I tell people, the biggest mistake we make in relationships is we choose the wrong people to get into relationship with. This is a poor functioning Venus.
all right? So this affiliative, stress-relieving function that we all need in order to be human is represented by, by Venus. And people that have Venus strong on their chart, they'll be counselors, right? Uh, artists, they have this, this knack of, of beautifying their space, right? Creating spaces that contribute to people relieving stress, all right? The next planet is Mars, right? Mars was the, the god of war, right? This is a very interesting and in, intense kind of planet, right? It's about the, the human function, the human need to fight for and defend what's truly necessary in our lives, all right? It, it's, it's, it's passion, it's fire, it's aggression, right? And what Mars points out is in all of our lives, right, there's going to be moments where we have to fight for something important to us. We have to defend something important to us, okay? And with Mars, when we're making a strong response, right, we have this sense of conscious passion, right? We have a, this clear sense of what we're willing to fight for, right? And when Mars is functioning well, we also have healthy boundaries, right? I mean, Mars is that energy where people are like, I don't want to mess, I don't want to mess with, with this person, right? And I mean, I was a football player. I have a strong Mars in my chart. Okay, so people that have this planet in their chart strong, they're going to be athletes, um, litigators, right? People that like to fight, right? Uh, one of the negative sides of, of Mars, if we're not making a strong response, is we have victim, victimizer uh, myths, stories that are going on in our life, right? Where people feel like we come on too strong and they feel victimized by us if there's too much Mars. And if there's not enough Mars, we're constantly being victimized, all right? And we'll know we're making a strong response to Mars when we have found a way to keep our wits in stressful situations, okay? Uh, after Mars, we, get, we move out to Jupiter, right? And I mentioned before that the planets sometimes give us clues, all right? Jupiter is the biggest planet. So Jupiter is a planet of expansion. It's, and it's really the, the human need to believe in something. Okay? And I think of two types of beliefs, okay? The first type of belief is, are the beliefs that were given to us, okay? And I mean, this is where religion gets, gets a bad name, right? The beliefs that are given to us. But most of us that are engaged in religion or grow up in religious families, by the time we reach our, our teenage years, we realize this belief system that I've, that I've been given, it actually doesn't work for me anymore, right? And then that's when the Jupiter adventure begins, where we need to go and test those beliefs with experience, okay, right? And this is Jupiter, the need to test our beliefs and the need to win, the need to have meaningful successes, the meaningful successes that come from learning to have confidence and to believe in yourself. So a uh, shadow side of Jupiter is disappointment, right? Next planet is Saturn, all right? Saturn is the, is the interesting planet, the planet of discipline. But, but really Saturn is the human need have something meaningful that we can put, that we can commit to, that we can put our effort towards, all right? If you look at the astrology book, say Saturn is the planet of blockages. Blockage. The idea is, if we want to accomplish something great in life, right, we have to learn to push past. So when Saturn is strong in someone's chart, they're committed, they're disciplined, they're going to get it done, okay? The shadow side is, is, is when they're committed to something, so the sad question, what can I invest my time and my energy in? actually going to create some sense of self-dignity and self-respect. Okay. Uh, exactly. Saturn is also a chart, but typically rise and gain of success. Saturn is also about rules. Key thing with Saturn is make sure you follow all your rules and not have your rules. Okay? For Saturn, it's a plan. And Uranus is this urge to break free and to free ourselves from our social condition. Okay? The next three planets, the last three planets, are considered invisible planets or outer planets because they weren't discovered. Uh, Uranus was discovered in the mid 1700s, uh, Neptune was discovered in 1850, and Pluto wasn't discovered until 1930. All right? And so these next three planets, more specifically, are about what it means to be a modern human. Okay? Mod, you know, modern started around the middle of the 1790s, which is when we saw the American Revolution, the French Revolution, where people realized we don't need no thinking people. Right? We, can, we can be an individual, we can take care of ourselves. And this is what the plan of is all about. It's about individuation. Who am I underneath what I've been conditioned to be? Okay? 
Okay? For making a strong response to your audience, we have, we have meaningful events in our life that establish our uniqueness, that put us in touch with our genius. And genius is the way is what we can see specifically because of our own unique experiences that other people can see. Right? When your audience goes wrong, it turns into some useless, pointless rebellion. Right? We just need to break free, but it's not about moving towards who you truly are, it's just the reflex to push against the point. And if your audience is strong in your chart, you have a need to break rules. Right? The, key, the key point here is break the rules that constrict you, don't just break the rules. Um, next one is, is Neptune. Right? Neptune is the human need to transcend, to have the experience of something greater than, our, than ourselves. Call it God, call it universe, call it whatever you want. But Neptune is about this experience of transcending. Right? When we make a strong response to Neptune, we feel connected. We have a, you know, it's going kind to of connect to the artist. 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 Can we can receive inspiration. Where do we receive inspiration and where do we feel? We're making it strong. We feel addiction. All right. right. Neptune yeah. is the need for escape, right? right. Healthy escape, spending, spending time in nature, nature, meditation, any kind of transfer. Unhealthy escape, life is too much. Life is too much. I need, I need to drink something. I need to take something to, to escape, right? Unhealthy Neptune. But the, it's a core human need to transcend. And finally, Pluto. All right. Pluto discovered in 1930. Pluto is about the human need to change the world, okay? The human need to change the world. And it's interesting, when I talk to people about Pluto, when you look at a chart, Pluto points to our deepest wound, our deepest woundedness, okay? And the connection here, right, is if we're too wounded and we're dealing with our personal stuff, we don't have the space or the clarity to think about how we can actually change the world. So Pluto requires us to deal with our own shadow, to deal with our own personal stuff, okay? And if we make a strong response, we feel wise, Right? And we're connected to some kind of larger, larger theme that gives our life meaning. Right? And if we don't make a strong response to Pluto, we just have continuous dramas, tragedies, catastrophes in our life. As the wound comes up to be healed, we can't quite do it, so we re-traumatize ourselves. But if we can heal, similar to the, to the Christian myth of Jesus went to hell, and then he ascended to heaven. And I think as being human, we, we all have an experience, an opportunity on this earth to bring these, these needs, to express these needs, and to live fully human lives. Thank you.